everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Sappy Renovation Garage Edition. How to change it up. And I hope you're going to sing that with me next time. Anyhow, how are you? So this, I'm going to do this. I've got a little project here I think I'm going to show you. I'm a show and tell. Um, I've never done this before, so I hope this works out and I hope it's not too boring. But one of the things that I'm going to need in my booth are acoustic panels. Now, an acoustic panel is something that helps, again, um, uh, control sound absorption. Uh, yes, we have a ton of uh, sound absorption in terms of the insulation, but this is just an added cushion. Uh, and in the end, I may not need them, but I want to have them ready. And uh, the way I'm doing, I'm building them myself. I've been, again, looking online and I could buy these things, but they're not cheap when you go to buy them. Um, and I figure I have some extra wood and then I could buy the stuff to make it and it's pretty cheap. I had the insulation. So, so here's the insulation that we need, which is the safe and sound, the rock wool. All right. This is one batten. And it's three inches thick, four inches long. Uh, coincidentally, they have <laughs> one by threes, um, which is not exactly one by three, but um, it's a uh, three inch uh, in depth and it's four feet long. So it's the exact length that I need and width of the, of the batten. So I have two of these. These were like $3.50 a board at Lowe's. So I picked each, uh, the, uh, them up. So I have two of them. And then for the ends, I have to cut them out at 15 and a quarter inches. Um, so let me go and do that. Give me a second. Give me one second. I'll be right back. We have a top, we have a bottom. Okay. So now we go and brad them together. So what I use, where is my brad gun, my brad gun? Oh my God. What do I do with my brad gun? Here it is. Oh. I have one quarter inch brads in this. So you see, <clears throat> one quarter inch brads, slip in. Um, my personal preference for tools, this so I don't shoot myself, um, is Ryobi. Um, I really like what they've got. Okay, anyhow, let me put the batten off to the side and uh, I'm gonna kind of come off camera for a second so I can get in the right angle. I'm moving closer to you. So I can actually start. Now I'm not putting wood glue in this. I'm literally just using these uh, brads to kind of get this thing lined up. Um, could you use wood glue as well? Sure, I don't think it's necessary personally, but again, this is me and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just doing this because I've been seeing uh, options that I like. And misfire. Thank you. Another one down bottom. I am also, so you know, you haven't been able to see, doing this on top of a piece of old um, um, drywall because underneath is my wood and when I start putting the rock wool on and the fabric, I don't want anything to damage the fabric. So I'm doing it this way. Yeah. 
Cool. So here is my frame, my friends. Cool. And now you'll see the rock wool will come in and we're gonna squeeze this puppy in to make it nice and tight. You want this nice and firm to put in here. So you can squeeze in a bit. Cool. And there you have how the rock will look. Cool. Now, that's part one. So now what we need to do, I think I'm gonna have this part be the part that's out front. This will be the back. Um, I wanna support this. So in order to do so, I've created several back pieces that will fit in here. These are cut to 13 and a half inches. So again, this is a reminder. This is a the one by threes full length at four feet. There's two of them. Each end piece is 15 and a quarter inches. The center pieces are 13 and 13 and a half or so. Um, so I have a couple of them cut. And again, scrap wood that I had. These were the these were the test cuts for when I made the window. If you recall, I routed out the center here. And then I screwed something up with the length, so I had to recut it. Anyhow, so I cut these in half and they kind of work. So these will be used for my next one. I'm using two. And um, I forget, I think I measured, there's no rhyme or reason, but I think I measured nine inches on the other set, on the, on the one that I, for the, my demo that I did. So I'll show you the demo soon. But uh, yeah, nine inches kind of feels good. I make sure that's even with even with this wood. And in again we go. And again we go. I don't know why nine, but it just felt like the right space. Because these will probably be used as my cleats, part of what my hanging mechanism will be, which I still haven't figured out yet but I have a couple ideas. We could go a number of different ways. These are not heavy. So I could go with a really, a good heavy duty Velcro, which I have, um, like commercial grade Velcro. Um, so I may use that and put that on each strip here and just Velcro it to the wall. Um, or I'll figure out a hanging mechanism. Anyhow, keeping on going. this stuff this is like I mentioned in one of my other videos this is the creative part for me um, since there's no performing happening you know okay so here we have the rough idea of what this is going to be the back let me just go back up front here because I want to kind of pull and stretch a little bit more this doesn't give, it doesn't stretch very much, deliberately. It's not designed to, but I do want to get at least to try to get to the bottom, which I was able to do in the last one. There's a little, little bit of a gap here and there, but that still will suffice. Okay, so the next step to this is all about um, getting it covered uh, with the fabric. So uh, what I'm doing first is putting batting on. So the batting, which is this beautiful stuff, is basically <laughs> simply to help uh, soften the corners, the edges. Because my friends, this is these edges are real. If you bump into the corners and all, they're nasty. So I got batting. This was not cheap, by the way. Why is batting so expensive? Let me see if I can figure out what I did. It's, I need a double layer. Oh, I see. So I need to use this end of it. Um, I cut this side for the original that I made, my demo. Let's see if this can work. You need a double layer of it. Um, well, even if I do this and then cut a second layer. Okay, so layer one. 
I'm going to cut this and then put a layer on top. Okay, so we have the two layers of batting. Now we're going to staple. And this is, again, one of those reasons why I have the other board on top of the table and not the wood. Because this stuff pulls like you wouldn't believe. So we're going to make sure we get it. Let's connect there. I'm not an upholsterer either. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not an upholsterer. Again, but I watch YouTube a lot. <laughs> so hey, why not? Where is my staple gun? I can't wait till this, this room is complete, complete when I have my workbench station in the back here because that's where that's all going to be. And I have all the tools where I want them. That would be nice. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go center. Again, Ryobi. Love me my Ryobi. Anything, everything, Ryobi. I don't, I'm not going to go too crazy on stapling this, mainly because uh, when I put the fabric on, oh, we are going to staple the shit out of it. Now, here is a little trick. I'm going to cut See if you can see this. I'm gonna cut into this here so that I can do, tuck this in and then over without having a huge clump like a, a wrapping a gift. I don't necessarily want it too clumpy. And you'll see, I don't go all the way to the edge of the wood. I cut, I keep about um, half an inch away. And uh, I'm not even cutting at the corner, just inside and about half an inch. Okay. So that way I can pull this in, staple, pull this in, staple. I'm telling you, you're going to go through tons of staples. Then, my friends, I'm pulling up and over. And see if I can show you. So that this seam, this curve is not too bulky. And you'll see why when we put the fabric on. So now we'll go from the center and do outside, get that there, outside. Okay, cool. Same thing on this side. Could you too? You turn it into a brooch, a pterodactyl. Name the movie. Come on, people. All right. Now the fun part of the fabric. Um, I have been looking for not a Damascus print, but sort of a faded geometric print that had tans and blues. I couldn't find anything for the life of me for a while at Joanne Fabric. So I actually picked up dye one day, blue dye, and like, um, whatchamacallit cloth, tan, uh, I can't even think of the word, uh, muslin type of thing. And I was going to dye it. And my friend Gina, who you met helping me with the window, was like, Chris, you don't want to do it. It's a mess. So we went back. I took my mom today to Joanne again, and she found this brilliant Whoops, this brilliant fabric. It's ex literally, it's exactly what I was looking for um, when I started this whole project. So like I said, I had done, I've done one of these already. So I just wanna see, I wanna make sure that the, the piece that's connected, I will be able to use. I'm just gonna cut this down before I start yapping with you all about it. I think I can. 
So this is backwards right now, obviously. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me cut this. Slide her down. And I'm gonna go from this side because that's where I had my last cut. I'm just gonna continue over. Okay, so the color scheme, so you know, which will help explain why I'm choosing this. Um, for the entire space, this area that I'm in, we're in here now is <clears throat> this this section of the room is going to actually be my gym. And the walls, the top part of the walls are going to be this, it's called Tornado Storm. It's a deep blue, like a dusted blue with, not light, but it's like a deep gray blue. The lower part is going to be like a wainscoting with a type of wall, uh, wallpaper print that goes in it. It's light. The floor is going to be like this dark blue, gray, black uh, floor. So I wanted the studio walls are going to be tan. They're going to be a dark, a deep tan, and I wanted a blue to go in there as well. But I wanted these to be the art, you know? So that's why I wanted a print, a cool print, because the walls will be of plain color, a flat paint, and then um, I wanted this type of thing. All right, so here we go. I'm going to push this to the side, turn this over. We're going to lay this puppy out. Now, I'm not concerned about the pattern because I, I don't mind the fact that, if you can see, it's this really cool pattern that just kind of continually repeats. So I don't mind if it's not perfect or centered or, or what have you. This looks, that's very centered. So I might actually get lucky and have that very much in the center. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Let's see if I can see it through here, but again, I'm not too worried because the other one that I did, the first demo that I did is not, and I like it still. Okay, onward she goes. And even this, I'm probably not doing right. But y'all, it will work. I don't want to go too far because I'm going to need Okay. So that's that part. Now, you get to see a little bit of what that's going to look like. Did I get it centered? I kind of did get it centered. How about that? All right. This may be a lot of fabric, so we'll see if this works. Now, here is something that I've done seeing somewhere that I recall. I'm going to see if I can get this. So you could see it. Doing this backwards, this is at first. Um, I'm taking this corner, and here's the edge, right? And I'm bringing this up and over, and I'm going to staple it in. Now, I'm gonna want enough fabric here that I'm gonna be able to tuck here and then tuck there. Can you, I don't so, see if you could see how that's folding in. So, we're gonna take this material, can't believe I'm doing this backwards. I hope I'm doing it right. I've got to turn it back this way. I'm paranoid, people. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Because I'm the one who wants to live with it. That comes up there. We do the fold and tuck. Fold and tuck. Bend and snap. Bend and snap. Name the show. Bend and snap. Bend and snap and name the show. Oh, that would be Legally Blonde. I music directed that at Cabrini. My wonderful students from Cabrini, I miss you all. I'm gonna try to refold this. Have it come up. I'm trying to find the best, best place for the fold. There we go. You have to play with the fabric a little bit, peeps. And then up we come here. So I'm gonna staple this one down first. I'm gonna get this nice and snug. I'm telling you, staples galore, cheese and crackers. And then up here, one more down there. And I'll show you 
that corner. Can you see how that worked out? So that's what we're going for, peeps. Uh, it's like a hospital corner, I guess. Like making a bed? I don't know. I just know I like the look of it, and it's not that complicated to do. Just got to make sure that you're going to get your material in the right place before you staple. Because that is the issue. The issue is getting the fabric in the right order. Here we go. Right. Do this side. Do this side. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, boy, wait, 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 look at this, mademoiselle, mademoiselle. Did I just go through another staple, maybe? All right, now, here we go, here we go. Stapling all up, all up in your face there, yo. Oh, that one's a little too. I could have probably gone a little bit in further. Instead, I kind of came close to the edge. All right. But you have the idea of how that top is nicely quaffed, right? Do the other side. Finish this one. Okay, so now we have a finished baffle, aka acoustic panel. Right? Not bad. Kind of cool. You can do it too. Um, and I think all together, this whole thing cost, let's see, three, six, let's say $9 for the wood. Um, and I had the, I look, I already had the uh, insulation, so I'm not even gonna count that. But the, the insulation is about um, four something a piece. So maybe that's 13, 14, I think, plus then the fabric, which I got on sale at cost, like three and a half, four yards of it, almost four and a half yards of it actually for, um, for what, um, $30. So I think this whole thing may have cost $25 to make, and it would have cost me like 70 to buy. Kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna put it in the room, and then we're gonna go in and look at them. So you get to see how they both look. And that's sort of the vicinity where they're gonna be hanging on the wall, not that close to one another, more like eh, here, here and here, but up higher, obviously. Um, so this is, so they're gonna go here, and I think I'm gonna make one more for this wall. And I may make one that goes long ways above where my shelves are going. So yeah. Happy day. All right. Thanks for watching. Again, this creative episode of a sappy renovation garage edition. And pretty soon you're going to see what that is turned into.